Iron Man, the film that revolutionised the comic book movie and birthed the MCU. It's been 10 years since this film's been released, and I remember watching this movie when I was 8 years old on the TV, and just, it was so cool, like the colours, the imagery, the action, it was all just so awesome, and just, does it hold up? Yeah, it holds up pretty darn well. Jon Favreau created such a solid foundation for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it's pretty impressive. Speaking of the cinematic universe, one thing from the get-go is that this film is a stark contrast to the look of the current MCU. This film looks gritty, real, raw, yet it still manages to maintain the cool and comic booky elements. A great example of this is the Mark 1 Iron Man armor. It's a lot more sleeker than the OG design from the comics, but it still maintains the bulky and boxy design. Now, when you think of Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. immediately comes to mind. He's done such a phenomenal job that he's just become so synonymous with the role. Tony's character arc is just so well done. He's the typical billionaire genius playboy philanthropist that we all know and kind of love. I mean, let's face it, he can be a bit of a dick at times. But he's not all quips and pickup lines. My favourite scene with him pre-kidnapping is the interview with that reporter. We get to see the playboy stuff, but we also get to see the noble side of Tony, the businessman, who when questioned about the effects of his weapons, stood his ground, and mentioned all the good that Stark Industries had done, and it was all a result of his weapons and military funding. Now, when Tony gets to the cave is when he really begins to change. With the help of Yinsen, he becomes a better man, more selfless. I love the line that he says to Yinsen just before he leaves and Yinsen passes away. The whole, thanks for saving me. I just love the double meaning behind it. Yes, he saved him from the cave, but he also saved him from his vanity. But all the eccentrics that make Tony Tony don't just disappear. He doesn't just become this all stoic and noble man. He still quits. He still makes an entrance, which is great to see, because normally when that's done with a the character, they normally lose all their quirks, I mean, my biggest example is Oliver Queen and Arrow. But then the thing that sets Tony Stark apart from other superheroes is the fact that he is quite arrogant, he is vain, he is a bit self-absorbed. I mean, the fact that he revealed to the world that he is Iron Man just proves that. Also, this is probably one of the most revolutionary comic book movie endings ever. Like, never had we seen at this point the superhero outright go, yeah, I am Iron Man. Since the first Spider-Man, there'd been this stigma that a hero could never reveal their identity because their family and loved ones would be in danger. And yes, that does happen, but the fact that Tony Stark just went out there and said, yeah, I am Iron Man, it just changed the whole game at that point. Like, it was crazy, like, whoa, what was going to happen in the sequel? What would happen next? Another quirk of Tony's character is that he always has to be building something. Before the cave, it was his cars, and after, it's the Iron Man suit. Which also seeds his obsession with him being Iron Man in later films, that's just such a cool detail that was there from the beginning. In terms of the origin in this movie, I'm actually pretty impressed of how faithful it is to the original Tales of Suspense, number 39. I mean, sure, it doesn't have Iron Man fighting a terrorist leader in like a weird sumo wrestling match. In terms of Iron Man being a billionaire genius playboy philanthropist who funds and makes weapons for the military, who's then involved in a weapons demonstration, who then gets kidnapped by terrorists and all that stuff, and the shrapnel, it's all there, and it's all pretty faithfully recreated. Which is actually quite impressive because of how ludicrous the idea was in the actual comics. I mean, it's kind of dumb when you read Tales of Sp Suspense number 39, but in the movie it actually works pretty well. Gwyneth Paltrow as Pepper Potts is great. I love how she stands by Tony through thick and thin, but then I also really enjoyed the fact that she questioned him about him going out as Iron Man, the fact that he was almost going to kill himself. But then once again, Tony's retort is just so well done. The idea that Tony is going out there as Iron Man to destroy the weapons that he created in order to protect them. However, his weapons weren't being used for that purpose. It was for terrorizing innocent people and civilians. This film also sets up the idea that Tony is the one who is all about accountability and how this will later come back in Age of Ultron and Civil War and the fact that Tony is always trying to make up from his past sins. I just love seeing the origin of this character and seeing him progress throughout these MCU films. It's just so well handled. But also, Robert Downey Jr. and Gwyneth Paltrow have excellent chemistry. Also, something that's just super interesting about the making of this film is the fact that they didn't really have a script. And when watching this film, you can't really tell. I mean, maybe by the third act you can kind of see it. But the way the movie plays out, you really can't tell, and that's pretty impressive. Terrence Howard as Rhodey is fine. I mean, I kind of just prefer Don Cheadle. I feel like Cheadle's got more charisma and sass than Terrence Howard does. Obadiah Stane, played by Jeff Bridges, is good, but inconsistent. He's pretty solid at the start and in the middle act, but then when we reach the climax, he just becomes a cartoon character. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave! With a box of scraps! Obadiah was a pretty decent villain at the start. I mean, we the audience liked him, but then we slowly start to realize that he's pretty scummy. I mean, double dealing with terrorists? Jeez, what a real 
Iron Monger. But to be fair, there is a point in the movie where it has to spell out to you that he is the bad guy. And then he goes out in the typical early 2000s superhero fashion in which a blast of energy just kills him. Oh yeah, we also get the first blue beam in the sky shot. I can't wait for the Avengers and Amazing Spider-Man and Suicide Squad to rip this one off. Speaking of ripping off, the design of the technology in this film was revolutionary, as it seems that every sci-fi or superhero film since this has started to do the floaty hologram tech too. But then, I don't really blame them because those special effects are pretty sweet. The CGI in this film is excellent. They've held up extremely well. I mean, at least 90% of the shots in this film still look fantastic to this day. The thing about Iron Man that sets it apart from most films in the MCU is the raw and gritty imagery, especially in the subject matter. The way the terrorist acts and behave is just done extremely well. I mean, especially for a PG-13 movie. I mean, that torture scene, that's pretty dark. And I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty nice to see, seeing as how most MCU movies post the Avengers seem to lack any of this grit, and they tend to stay more focused on the shiny VFX and all the jokes. But then again, the jokes in this film are actually pretty great. I don't feel like I'm being pandered by the director to make me laugh. The grabby robot, the slapstick crashing into the wall, saying the Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement Logistics Division instead of S.H.I.E.L.D. And well, any real scene of Tony just being Tony, it's all pretty hilarious. Speaking of S.H.I.E.L.D., this movie gave birth to the legend that is Phil Coulson. And that Nick Fury post credits teaser is corny looking back at it, but it's pretty badass as from the get-go, Marvel already had their plan for the Avengers set in stone. The action in this film is pretty good. I mean, I like the cave scene a lot. I like the fight in Golmira. The air chase between Iron Man and the Jets were also pretty interesting and cool. However, I think the fight in the final act between Iron Monger and Iron Man is pretty weak. It just felt sluggish and kind of boring. Also, the whole, you upgraded your armor thing is just hilarious, seeing as the fact that when Obadiah takes off, his jets are just so slow, and it's just so funny to look at. Speaking of the flying segments, Iron Man's first flight is just incredible. Favreau really manages to capture the exhilaration, and most of that is due to the criminally underrated soundtrack done by Ramjit Jawad. I mean, this soundtrack just had moments where I got massive chills, and it was just epic. The music that plays during the assembly of the Mark 1 and 2, as well as the first flight, just make me feel super good inside, and it's just really nice to listen to. In conclusion, the truth is, I love Iron Man. Hey, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, leave me a comment down below. Like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Hit the notification bell to stay notified. My social media links are down in the description, so if you give them a look and a follow, that'd be real nice. And until we meet again, I'll see you guys next time.